Welcome everyone. This is Victoria English, head coach at Alcohol Free Lifestyle. Today you're in for a special treat. I am recording a live coaching call. So in this episode, you'll get to hear what it's like to be inside of Project 90 to get that high level coaching connection with others and growth. I will be using first names only for the members who have agreed to participate in this call. Just so you know, every member who joins our program signs a non-disclosure agreement. We do not record anything about anyone or share anything about anyone without their permission. So the members today, you will hear their voices. They have agreed to be recorded and I am appreciative of them for coming and sharing a little bit of their story, what their experience is like in Project 90, and also uh, to be here to learn and grow together. So on that note, we will get started. Uh, today we got Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer, Brenda, Scott, and Steve. Uh, I like to start the calls, as you know, with a little self-check-in. How are you really? And so if you could put in the chat a little bit about how you are today. Uh, we have a member on day 26, another on day 29, 9, and 24. And we do this on calls to ask ourselves, how are we really? When we're in the cycle of drinking, we don't do that. We don't have those moments of deep reflection to find out, how am I really? What do I need? It's more likely that our brain jumps to, I need a drink. So a big part of this program is getting in touch with ourselves and how we are so that we can get our needs met in a healthy, productive, non-destructive way. All right, Brenda says, feeling strong and dedicated. Brenda, on day 29, can you talk about what that, what that, what is that like, feeling strong and dedicated? Hi, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I feel strong as far as um, where I want to go with this. Um, I have made a commitment, and it's something that has excited me. Um, I've tried to quit many times. And it's always been um, hard, depressing. Um, um, so I am dedicated to this program. And I think what really makes it strong for me is the ability to mix with other like people. Um, the information that I get from the polos and the coaching calls is, is so important to the way I'm living my life right now. Um, like I said before, I, I live for my coach calls and my polos throughout the day because it's an ongoing thing with the polos. It, it can just, you can feel kind of crappy and listen to a couple of polos and it'll pick you right up. So I'm feeling very strong and very good about it. Oh, thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Yes, for our listeners, what is Marco Polo? Marco Polo is a video app that we use within our program of Project 90. And it is in real time, it's real time video. And we encourage our members to use that to connect with one another, get to know each other, but also to reach out for support in the moment. Uh, instead of having to, to make yourself call somebody and hope they pick up or, or whatever other tools you may have used in the past, this is live action. And so when people are coming home from Alex, work, I'm upstairs, they, Alex. they are having those, uh, those cravings, they can hop on Polo, they can share that, they can be vulnerable and get the support that they need. So thanks for sharing that, Brenda. And Brenda, I know that you have tried in the past to stop drinking and it's really encouraging to see your growth and progress. Thank you, it feels wonderful. Mm -hmm. Good, all right. And Scott says he's beginning to feel steadier on day nine. Scott, how would you compare day nine to day one? Um, a little easier. Uh, the, the, I mean, almost every night I have the uh, these terrible cravings between five and eight. I feel like I get a little crazy. Um, and uh, last night wasn't so bad. 
Uh, so that was, I've been waiting for some relief and I started to finally feel some last night. So I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. The, uh, the first week or so can, can really be tough. Alcohol is, is a powerful, powerful drug. And I appreciate you sharing that because yeah, it's like in the past when I've tried to quit, I've always just white knuckled it. And I guess I realize now I used to take some comfort in knowing that, you know, if, if I cheat a little bit, who's going to know, but me, it's all, you know, fine. Um, it's transitioning. Um, and then I can always just go back whenever I want. And it's, uh, it feels different this time because I've made this commitment to myself and all of you and, you know, I made the, the payment. It's just, uh, I, I don't feel like there's an easy off ramp. I, I can't just go like take a shot, you know, to, um, like ease through the night and call it good because it was just one. So it's, um, so yeah, the fact that I made it through a whole week without anything at all, um, yeah, there's still a ways to go, but it's not easy yet. Right, right. Well, in here, we we focus on the wins and we reflect on where we were, where we are today and where we want to be. Um, no one ever wants to go back to day one, but we've all done it countless times. And you're right, Scott, in this program, you have skin in the game. It's not just the financial commitment. It's being a part of this community. And knowing that, wow, if I don't show up, it's going to, people are going to notice. And I have this connection to, to, we're all in this together kind of feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's great. Um, yeah, honestly, I didn't think it would help as much, but watching those polos where all these other um, really together people are sharing their struggles, it actually makes me feel not as alone in this whole thing. So. That's the intention. Yeah. I like how you said, you know, pulled together people, because isn't that true? In Project 90, we all walked through the world looking pulled together. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Very few people knew that I was struggling. And so I get it. When people come in here, they see people that, that they, to whom they can really, really relate. And so I'm, I'm so glad that's been an, a pleasant surprise for you, Scott. Really good. Keep going. And Thank the great you. thing is, in a week, you'll feel even better. <laughs> look forward to that. Look yeah, lots that. of good things to look forward to during this process. Yeah, well, thank you guys for sharing that. Uh, we're going to talk today about reclaiming our lives after alcohol. You know, when we think about people with a drinking problem, we can think about people that we see in the media or uh, the poor souls who are really at that rock bottom. And in Project 90, the members who join us often face obstacles in really conquering this alcohol thing because they don't look like that. And yet, alcohol was claiming parts of their lives, robbing us, making our lives less than. And so when we release the alcohol, we get to reclaim the things that alcohol took from us, whether that was visible to the outside world or not. We have gratitude that we were able to maintain what we did and say enough is enough. I'm done with you. So today we're going to talk about what do we what did alcohol take from us? And why? Why did it happen and how do we get it back? And as you guys know, we talk a lot about the science in here, the science of addiction, the science of habit, the science of change. Can someone share their experience with that feeling of 
alcohol has taken from me and I can't understand why I let it. Jennifer. Wow. <laughs> um, it, it took time in being present um, away from me and within my son's life. Um, and why it did that is because of all the other stuff around me, the stresses, the trying to hide, trying to numb myself from all the stuff around me, basically not being a good enough mother and, and working too hard and trying to prove something to everyone. Mm. When you were experiencing that, especially around the situation as a mother, uh, what sorts of feelings came up? Well, regret. Um, I, I regretted being that way. Uh, I wanted to lead by example. I wanted to be the perfect mother and do, you know, I was always there for him, uh, but not always present. Um, I would always do everything that needed to be done as a mother, you know, feed, clothe, you know, do everything, be at all of his events and, and made him a number one priority. But I wasn't always full mentally there. I, I numbed it down. I, I, you know, it was mama's little helper to get me through things, uh, arguments, you know, being a single mother, arguing and, and having those battles. You had to pick your battles. Well, I picked wine to calm myself down so I wouldn't do that to him and, and be that, you know, the the driver of, you know, trying to to discipline him, you know. It took the pain away from, you know, wanting to be the best, but not knowing how um, and what impact I really had on him. I get it. Yeah. Brenda, would you like to share a little bit about that? What alcohol took from you that you are now excited to reclaim? I think the alcohol, well, I know the alcohol took away um, my whole being. I was a completely different person when I would drink. Um, sometimes I thought <clears throat> a drink or two made me even better. Um, but that was simply false courage. Um, but I th the biggest thing is my ability to be the mother that I thought I should be. Um, to be the spouse that I thought I should be. Um, I, I wasn't present, like Jennifer said. And I think some of the things that would come up, um, I would make it to everything. But um, just the ability of not being able to have thorough and enjoy us um, from what I was, whatever I was involved in. And Sometimes um, I feel like now I feel like, yes, alcohol, it's a disease, um, but it's a manageable one. And I feel like I have to tell myself this is far from the worst that could ever happen to me. There are so many other people that struggle with so much worse. Um, and I feel fortunate to have a disease that I can manage. And with the help of this group and all the people, the coaches, um, I feel that it's, it's manageable and I can get my life back. Yeah, yeah, you can. You know, I love the trend of moving away from the term alcoholic into the appropriate language, which is alcohol use disorder. And back when I was drinking, I was suffering from alcohol use disorder. That's a very broad spectrum and we were all on it. Many of our listeners are on that spectrum. You don't have to qualify to change your relationship with alcohol. And I think that's very liberating to say, you know what? It could be worse, but ooh, I think it's bad enough. I'm going to do something about it. And so... <clears throat> You're right, Brenda. When when I go to the doctor, my medical history will show that in the past, I 
suffered from alcohol use disorder. Through the work that you're doing here, that all of you are doing here, that, can be, that will be back in your medical history. It does not ever have to be present in your life. You do not have to have active alcohol use disorder. And a big part of what we do in here is understanding the why. You know, how did this happen? What is this drug? What is this substance? And breaking free of it. Yes, Steve. I just wanted to, because uh, this is an interesting topic, um, calling it a disease or an alcohol use disorder. The, do you know what the DMS-10 is? It's a diagnostic manual. Mm -hmm. um, it is medically classified as a use disorder. Um, I believe that people throw around the term disease or, or, or not outside of you saying you have a disease or your doctor says you have a disease. I think the purpose of it is to um, soften the stigma, maybe. It, it, then you could say, well, I, I have a disease. And um, I actually asked an addiction, addiction medicine guy, um, disease or disorder? He goes, no, it's a disease. And I said, is that really what you believe? Or is that what you were trained to believe? And he goes, no, I believe it. And I said, then tell me what other disease can be treated by group therapy. Hmm. And he said, well, psychiatric disorders. Hmm. I said, seriously, why are drugs the first line of treatment then? Um, it, it just, it, it really in the, in the grand scheme of things, does it really matter what you call it? It doesn't, mm -hmm. but Veronica is completely correct. That is how it's classified. It isn't classified as disease. Mm -hmm. It is an interesting debate. And, uh, you know, the way I, I, I talk about it is if we are driving on a mountainside road and there's a mudslide, and our, our car slides down into the valley. Are we going to sit there and analyze how we got down there and name it and describe it in detail and all the things, or are we going to figure out what we're going to do next? That's what I love about coaching. It's like, okay, you know what? Alcohol got its hooks into you. There's a myriad of reasons. Potato, potato, alcohol use disorder, spectrum, disease, choice model, whatever it is. It was impacting your life in a negative way. And so what do we do now? What do you want your life to look like? So yes, I agree. It's such an interesting topic. You know, we're going to talk more about how did we allow alcohol to take things from us? Everyone here wants to be the best version of themselves. Every person who joins Project 90 is high achieving in usually more than one area of their lives. And so how did this happen? What is the deal with alcohol? We could see the decline. We could see that it was definitely costing us more than it gave us. So why did we keep going back? Right? Let's talk a little bit about the why. And that's where I invite you to suspend judgment about yourself for a little while. And put on your lab coat. Put on your goggles and let's learn. Let's learn the why of how this happened, what's going on, what happens when we take that drink. Give me just a moment to share my screen. And for our listeners, I will put these uh, slides into the show notes so you'll be able to see some things. So when we drink, we are under siege. We're under attack. Our brain is being attacked by this substance. Over time, 
drinking enough, enough times, causes us to act in ways in which we don't recognize ourselves. And if you do that enough times, you start to believe that you are that person. Can anyone relate to that? Did you ever have days where you're like, man, I don't, am I not a good person? Like, what is the deal here? Scott? Yeah. You know, yeah, all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So drink too much. Um, you know, two drinks, I was usually pretty responsible. Three drinks. A little more lively four drinks mm -hmm. I'd say some things i'd really regret um and five drinks i get really fuzzy but i would wake up just filled with shame and regret um, right call it right. hang anxiety um i yes, lived through that a lot over the years yeah yeah and so as intelligent people uh we would think to ourselves gosh that didn't go well i think i won't do that again except alcohol is different. It can leave us really puzzled. And so that's what we're gonna go over a little more, more in depth. How does it attack the brain? We're gonna talk about the dopamine, the limbic system, the neurotransmitters. And we're gonna take you through that in kind of like uh, looking back at one of your drinking days so that you can understand why the heck did I do what I did? The intention of that is to hopefully replace that shame, regret, self-judgment with understanding, with education, and the awareness that you now have a choice in what happens next. Alcohol has lost its voting power. And to keep the voting power suspended, this sort of education is key. It's key to empowerment.